welcome. God bless you as we worship on this last Sunday of June 2020. I'm so glad that you're worshiping with us, whether it's on Sunday or another day of the week. And I hope that today you'll be inspired and encouraged and strengthened. If you're new to Bethany Church or if you're a new resident in Gloucester Point or the surrounding areas, we welcome you to continue to worship with us online as well as in person when our in-person worship resumes. Our carol on today was Lift Every Voice and Sing. Our voluntary is a hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, the original version by Martin Luther, and also Fantasy on A Mighty Fortress is Our God by Johann Pachelbel.
a mighty fortress is our God. Verses 1, 2, and 3 in our United Methodist hymnal. It's found on page 110 if you have one with you. I know that many of you have prayer as a central part of your day, as well as a central part of your time with God. This morning we share our prayer concerns, and then we'll have a prayer about the stopping of the spread of the coronavirus, and then we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are our strength and a mighty fortress. And we come to you this morning, Lord, with people and situations, Lord, that we lift up in prayer to you. We join our prayers with others who are also worshiping at this time and on other days. Father, we pray for Jean Haywood, who was in the hospital recently for removal of a skin cancer cell on her neck. She had a previous stay in ICU for a GI bleed. Father, we pray for a continued good recovery for Jean, for both issues. Father, we pray for Sarah Hillard's sister's four-year-old great-grandson who has been diagnosed with Coates' eye disease. He has had one surgery so far. And may have to have several more. Lord, we pray for Jackson Jalil and his mom, Crystal. 
Father, we pray for Rudy Shackelford, who has a routine eye appointment tomorrow, Friday, June the 26th. Let us pray for Jean and Sarah and Rudy and for others who are on our hearts today and for ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Loving God, you are almighty God. We know that everything is in your perfect sovereign control. And we know that you have created us with free will and with creativity. God, I ask that you work within all people to keep the coronavirus from continuing to spread. Help people to decide to stay home instead of traveling or going out needlessly. Comfort families as they decide to keep their distance from elderly and other high-risk family members. Thank you, God, for the creative ways people are finding to stay in touch. Please keep the creative ways coming, Lord. We need them to help us get through this. We pray for our medical professionals and for counselors, caregivers, and health care workers and first responders as they work longer hours with fewer supplies and with more risk of contracting COVID-19 themselves. Bring your protection upon them as they serve their patients. Cause, Lord, the supplies to arrive safely so that they have the supplies and the protective items needed to stay safe on the job. And even as they walk through this dark valley, may they fear no evil because you are with them. Your rod and your staff comfort them. COVID-19 is Humbling us, Lord. The whole world is adjusting to new ways of life. And I ask that you guide us in these new realities. Help us to have more grace and understanding with one another. Lord, I'm sure that parents feel worn out. And kids feel anxious and worn out too. And grandparents included. Help us each, Lord, to speak words of kindness and encouragement and to show love for one another. You are the God of hope. And I pray 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 and 11 over each one praying today and our world, which says God has delivered us from such deadly perils and God will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us as you help us by prayer. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Just a few brief announcements to share. One of our youth... Samantha Jacobs is available as a babysitter. Please call Kathy Jacobs to inquire about Samantha's availability. The phone number is 
824-4491. Also, our Bishop Sharma Lewis was invited to offer prayer during Governor Ralph Northern's prayer vigil this past Wednesday with the Virginia Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. The theme of the vigil was One Commonwealth, Many Virginians, Uniting an Interfaith Prayer for Healing and Unity. Also, please continue to use our Congregational Prayer Tree to stay in touch with one another and to share prayer requests and updates. Contact your caller with that information or call me directly at 540-631-4469 or you can text me at the same number. Hi kids, Pastor Mike again. You can see that for our children's story this morning I have a small radio. You know, when I turn my radio on like this, all the music comes right out of the air, doesn't it? If I turn the knobs a little bit or push the buttons, I can get voices of several different people from several different radio stations. Some of the stations are close by and some are quite a long ways from here. But just take a look around at the air. You can't see the radio waves and you can't hear them without a radio. Television waves are like that too. They're all around you, but you can't see them unless you have a television. In the Bible, there's a story that shows that things we can't see are often very important. In the book of 2 Kings, the army of the Syrians came to attack the city of Samaria. While the prophet Elisha was in the city, and Elisha's servant was afraid. And he cried out, Master, what shall we do? And Elisha said, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those that are with them. And then Elisha prayed that God would open his servant's eyes. And suddenly the servant could see the angels that were all around Elisha to guard him and keep him from harm. Psalm 34, 7 tells us that God's angels are all around us too. It says, The angel of the Lord encamps around those who respect Him, fear Him, and honor Him, and He delivers them. Do you know, kids? God protects us by day and by night. He is always near. He is always present. He is omnipresent. You can't see Him, but you can't see the radio waves or television waves either, can you? Still, you know they are there because the minute you turn on the radio or the TV, you get a program. Remember, just because you can't see God or His angels doesn't mean they're not there. All you have to do is turn on the switch of faith and you'll know they're always there with you. Please pray after me. Dear God, thank you for always being there. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to share a brief stewardship moment this morning. Our slogan here at Bethany is the church with open hearts, minds, and doors. It's a spinoff from our denominational slogan a number of years ago. It's very important to us. You know, I ask people to share their hearts on what it means to them. And I have found that it means that all people are welcome, that every member is a minister. It means that this local church and our community and our world are our responsibility. It means helping people become 
and stay believers and disciples of Jesus Christ. And it means that worship is both a delight and a response. We cannot accomplish any part of our slogan without your generosity. The generosity of prayer, of your presence, your being here, of gifts, financial, and talents, and wisdom, and love, and service. I like to think of service as caring action. So as we close the first six months of 2020 and look forward to the next six months, thank you for your past gifts and let's look forward to the wonders that can be accomplished when all of us give all the different kinds of offerings that we can give in love. Take a moment now and write out your offering and prepare it. Our offertory today is entitled, On Bended Knees. It's transcribed for organ by Rudy Shackelford. And the writer of it is Harry T. Burley. The offertory today laments the recent tragic deaths of African Americans, including George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Amand Arbery, Rayshard Brooks, and David McAtee. It's based on the spiritual, nobody knows the trouble I've seen.
Our hymn of preparation is My Hope is Built, found on page 368 in our United Methodist hymnal. We'll sing the first two verses. Our scripture today is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. This comes from the New Revised Standard Version. Keep your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life. The message says it this way. Keep vigilant watch over your heart. That's where life starts. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. J. Vernon McGee, best known for his Through the Bible radio broadcasts, writes in his commentary on Proverbs, William Harvey, back in the 17th century, discovered the circulation of the blood, which revolutionized medical science. And yet here in Proverbs, which was written about 2,700 years earlier, there is a recognition of the importance of the heart for the maintenance of life. And the heart symbolizes the center of one's innermost being. Did you know that the word heart is mentioned over 700 times in the Scriptures? From Genesis to Revelation, as well as in the intertestamental books that we call the Apocrypha. The Bible says that the heart is the seat of the total personality and life of a person. Both the Bible and the science demonstrate this to be true. The issues of life flow from this place we call the heart. Every year I have an annual physical. Usually I have it around my birthday, but this time it got pushed to next month. And there's always a question like, tell me how things are going. What's going on? How are you doing? And I always say the same thing. You want the 50-second answer or the 50-minute answer? Because either way, I have to answer him. I have to be truthful. Now, that doesn't sound right. have to. I am truthful. I would only be hurting myself if I chose not to be truthful. And that's the question that I want to ask today. How are you doing? As a disciple of Jesus Christ, maybe your heart is hurting. Maybe life is hurting. And it's more than just feeling cooped up in your home or being angry or disappointed having to reschedule a family vacation. Allow me to offer some things in the next few minutes that I hope will be helpful. And I hope it will help you to experience a, a redemptive touch by the Holy Spirit. First one is this. Be honest with God. Say it with tears, with words. Don't spend much time trying to justify your anger or your hurt. Deep honesty may not happen in a five-minute devotional. It takes a larger block of time. This kind of openness is not easy for everyone. You know, too often in prayer, we are more concerned about being religious than we are about being honest. 
Be honest with God. Number two, approach God with confidence. God loves you. Jesus loves you. The Holy Spirit loves you. And God wants to help you with your life and with your heart. Do you believe this? Hebrews chapter 4, 16 says, Therefore let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Approach God with confidence. Here's number three. Listen to God. I almost always go to the Psalms. They contain almost every emotion, a conflict, and tragedy known to humanity. I listen for God's voice, and I read until I hear my voice in the Psalms. I'm reading, and all of a sudden, yes, that's it. That, that's what I'm feeling. That's what I'm thinking. And then I know that I'm close to an answer, to comfort, to wisdom. So listen as the Holy Spirit speaks to your spirit. Listen to God. Number four, stay diligent. You wouldn't stop eating a meal when you're still half hungry. So stay with it. Bigger issues and emotional pain require it. Caring for your life is not drive through Christianity. Stay diligent. Number five, time heals. I never did like that saying, but I think there's truth in it. Time heals. Number six, receive God's grace and peace. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 16 says, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. Receive God's grace and peace. Pour out your heart until God's peace comes to you. You see, God wants to give it. And it's worth waiting for. You know, too often we leave before the peace comes. The seventh and the last one is this. Gratitude. Gratitude is a way that you can care for your life. In the, in the 2019 movie, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, Tom Hanks portrays Fred Rogers of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Perhaps you've seen it. I won't spoil it for you, but in one scene, Mr. Rogers is sitting in a restaurant with another person who is struggling to care for his life and struggling to care for those who are a part of his life. You can find the clip on YouTube. But Mr. Rogers says, let's try something. Let's take one minute and think about all the people who loved us into being. And his friend hesitates. And then Mr. Rogers says, they will come to you. And they did. So let us do that now.
gratitude helps us to care for our lives. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is Are Ye Able? Number 530 in our hymnal. Let's sing two verses. I hope that you will have a good week. And I look forward to worshiping with you again next Sunday, which will be the 4th of July holiday weekend. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Amen. Our closing carillon postlude is We Shall Overcome. <laughs>